you probably all have been impatiently waiting for my new full feature film featuring the uh, Smurf Life or uh, the Schlumpf Drehbank as the Germans say so good news it's time for testing the uh, motor is working again one of uh, the capacitor leads was uh, broken so that was an easy fix I uh, also figured out why there's uh, two belts on here um, the, uh, the motor can slide uh, well sideways on this uh, bar here a bit rusty Oop. all right so when you uh, move to a smaller groove on the spindle pulley the belt gets too long and there's no way to tighten it anymore so at that point the idea is to switch to a shorter belt there's a spring over here that is supposed to tension the uh, belt but um, I haven't uh, found a way to hook this thing to the motor there's, uh, now I'm gonna get some bungee cords that should do it for now some lubrication alright so so this will be the first time I'm gonna spin the spindle here we go well that wasn't very exciting this spindle spins pretty easy compared to the uh, the other light I restored there is a bit of end play I've uh, found out that this uh, spindle nose is the same as uh, as the one on my wood life here's the uh, face plate that came with the wood life that fits nice and easy I could also use this face plate to mount the old big chuck that I picked up last summer here are some other attachments that uh, I got with a wood lathe they should also fit this machine well this seems to be an adapter and this one here some kind of holder this here is for driving a lathe dog and that's a spider I also got a tab to uh, uh, make the same thread as on the spindle so that would be useful I still got a brand new Chinese uh, four jaw laying around and with this I could make a, uh, a back plate for, uh, for that chuck although I might not need a four jaw chuck because uh, one of my viewers pointed out that this uh, chuck can probably be adjusted after you uh, clamp down the uh, workpiece using these uh, smaller uh, uh, square holes 
I got the chuck for it. Unfortunately, it uh, is seized up. So I probably need to take this thing apart. If anybody recognizes this uh, chuck, I am interested in finding out more about it. Brand name, when, where it was made. There is some information on the front, some patent numbers, and there might be a, a name on there, but I can't read it. If you want to give it a go, you got to hit space now. Well, let's see if we can uh, face off this uh, piece here. I already uh, cleaned up, I already re um the dovetails and uh, adjusted the uh, gips. Um, I'm gonna clean up the tool rest here and then uh, mount the tool and start cutting. So that's better. You know, I've heard that the camera adds at least 10 pounds of rust. Not sure if that's true. Might be less. First cut. Um, I have no idea how quick this thing will be running. Um, hopefully, the belt will um, survive. So that was pretty good. There's a there's a bit left on the uh, in the center, but uh, not bad, especially for such a slow speed. And as usual, I have no idea what kind of metal this is. So we were testing at 425 RPM. By the way, the uh, motor is running 1450 RPM and uh, it's a one horse motor. So what is a lathe test without a little dial gauge action? Not too bad, about 200 of a millimeter run out. And I couldn't uh, measure against the uh, spindle nose, there was no uh, good surface. For my next test, I'm going to recut this uh, pointy bit that was uh, actually made on the uh, on the lathe I restored. Uh, still running at 425 RPM. That's not even close to running through. I think the chuck wasn't probably uh, seated against the register, so um, let's try again. I need to uh, move the cross lights. a little bit of shutter and also the, the lathe is a bit uh, shaking because of the motor
looks like I'm a bit high. No, I'm a bit low. Let's add a shim. Final cut. Well, that wasn't perfect, but I see room for improvement with a better motor mount. When this uh, lathe got its uh, Smurf color scheme, they also put some paint on the uh, the feeways. Brilliant. That's just brilliant. Anyway, I need to remove this before I can uh, check. Uh, the tailstock uh, for alignment. I desmurfed the V-way and I'm ready to look at uh, tailstock alignment, something that has been an issue with my uh, uh, restored lathe. And I'm getting a feeling that it could be a problem with this machine as well. The, uh, the quill here is neither more stable 2 nor 1. And you can feel that it is a little damaged on the inside. And to make weather worse, I don't have um, a nice fitting uh, center point to check for alignment. This is the one that came with the machine. It's a Morse 2. And as you can see, that only fits for a very small part. So now I was thinking I might do a center drilling test, but my chuck options are uh, limited. This one has a screw, this one has a straight shank, this one might fit, but it does look terrible. So, not really something you want to use for a uh, reliable test. But it does fit. So we are going to do a center drilling test. Can't do much damage. A uh, sacrificial center drill. Oh, this thing feels terrible. The chuck key is also worn out where it doesn't belong with this uh, chuck. Well, that's. Well, I can't properly tighten it. And there is no other chuck key um, in the drawer. I'm going to see if I have one that fits. Well, this one is also not the right one, but at least I got it a bit tighter. And here we go. The bit is pushed into the chuck. I'm gonna look for another chuck key. Same problem. I'm gonna get a pipe wrench. I was going to tighten it up with this uh, pipe wrench, but uh, it spins in the quill. Yeah, taper isn't strong enough to hold it. 
probably because of uh, the damage that is already there. So I'll uh, I'll stop uh, this test. It's not useful anyway because of the bad shock. So just like my uh, restored lathe, this one also has still stuck problems. And I'm starting to think that the uh, tail stuck on my restored lathe was already bored out to MT2, but it wasn't done properly, and that's why it's now misaligned. This is a little over 50 mil, and for an MT2 table, you need about a eh, little under 18 mil. So if I take off one mil on both sides, a, uh, a uh, more stable two should go in almost all the way, leaving this is a bit more than five mil, so that will leave a wall thickness of four mil. I think that should be acceptable. But I'm not sure if, uh, if this is a job I can do myself. So uh, that concludes testing. There is some potential here if you can uh, fix the quill and maybe make a better motor mount. But I'm not sure if I'm the one who's gonna undertake that job. I'm thinking about uh, selling this thing as soon as possible. So uh, I can open up those uh, doors again and roll in my uh, old timer for some uh, much needed uh, maintenance.